Today, we come to the final chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes, and I've enjoyed uh, this study through the book of Ecclesiastes chapter by chapter. I hope that it has been helpful. I hope it has been insightful. I hope that it has been encouraging uh, to you as it has to me for all of us to know God, know our purpose, know the, the fleeting years of life, and to remember what this life is all about, which brings us to the conclusion of Solomon's book of Ecclesiastes, which really continues a thought, or part of the thought, a thought that he had there in uh, chapter 11. If you remember in the, the last couple of verses in chapter 11, he was saying, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that the Lord, that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart, put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. They are fleeting. The prime of life is fleeting, which he continues that thought, though, in chapter 12, verse 1, because he then says, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, and here's why. He goes on to explain, as he was saying about in the prime of life and the young, you're able to do all of these things, you know, rejoice in that. But remember now, while you're young, your, your creator, God, in the days of your youth, because as we get older, and especially when we get into our, the later years of life, if we live that long, this physical body is going to diminish and we aren't going to be able to think and do and act and and live life the way we did when we were young which is what he goes on to describe in a figurative um, imaginative way when he says to remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say i have no pleasure in them when the days get hard while the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, you can still see clearly. And the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, so again the keepers of the house are trembling, your bones, you become weak, and you begin losing teeth, the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim, again, having trouble seeing. When the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one, when you can't hear very well, when one rises at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low when you're rising up early and then also again about not being able to hear. Also, they are afraid of height, of terrors in the way. And when the almond tree blossoms, gray hair. The grasshopper is a burden, desire fails, for man goes to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets. I mean, Lord willing, what's going to happen for all of us if we live long enough is we're going to grow old, our bodies are going to wear out, and one day, as Solomon has pointed out throughout all of this, we are all, no matter who we are, we are all going to die. We are all, our bodies are going to give out. Our bodies are going to fail. Our bodies are going to shut down and stop working. And we are going to die. And people will mourn for us. So again, Solomon is saying, verse 6, as he repeats, Remember your Creator now, today, while you're able. And you have life and vigor and youth and, and strength and knowledge and abilities before the difficult days come, before the silver cord is loose or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well, then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Solomon has reminded us throughout this book that once we're dead, once we're not here anymore, there's nothing more we can say. There's nothing more we can do. We're not taking anything with us. So he says, verse 8, Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. It is fleeting. It is temporary. Time is precious. 
And we're not even guaranteed. Think about it this way, too. We're not even guaranteed to live a long life. We're not guaranteed to be able to grow old. And what Solomon has reminded us throughout this book is while we have today, while we have the time, the energy, the knowledge, the ability right now today, we need to be giving our lives to the Lord, to know and to remember our Creator. And to rejoice in his way and his blessings to live for him. We've talked about the wisdom of living God's way versus the foolishness of living the world's way. Which then, verse 9, he finishes up with some reminders about this when he says, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs, these teachings and wisdom, which we have, we have many preserved for us in Ecclesiastes, in the book of Proverbs, even in the Psalms. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, delightful words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And we need to listen. We need to take them to heart. We need to take heed of ourselves. And further, my son, be admonished by these. By these words, be warned, be encouraged, be guided. Of many, making many books, there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. You know, the, again, this flesh, we can only do so much, and it's only going to go for so long. So while we have today, make it count. As Paul said, redeem the time, or make the best use of the time, which brings Solomon to his conclusion in verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here's what it's all about. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all, or this is the whole duty of man. This is our task. This is our purpose, to know God, to fear God, to love God, and keep his commandments. Because that will be blessing, that will be life. That gives our life purpose. It is the only purpose and meaning of this life. Without God, this life is nothing. It is pointless. It is useless. It is hopeless. Which is why we need to know God, love God, fear God, keep God's commandments. Because we also know this, for God will bring every work into judgment, whether good or evil, in every secret thing. We can't hide anything from God. God knows what's in our heart. He knows what's in our mind. God knows what is in our life. God knows how we're living, even if others don't. And we are all going to stand before God in judgment. And God is going to judge us by the good and the bad. And we need to be ready for that. Which is why now, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Fear God, keep His commandments. That is what this life is about. And let's continue to learn that, grow in that, know that, live that, so that one day... We can stand before God and know that we're going to heaven, which will be eternal life. And that is what we need to be living for and preparing for. God bless.